All right, quick update tonight on the Mega Dongle, Mega Little Dongle X. This is the next, this is the version two that is designed for the 20 cell and the 30 cell uh, packs that we currently have that are scooter packs, right? Um, I know I'm kind of late. We kind of said that uh, this would be released around mid-September, but here we are kind of at the end of September and I still we still haven't. So this is one of five pre-production. These are like the first five that we made. Now I'm just gonna put it through spaces, run some tests to see that everything is gonna work and then we'll order the full production, you know, a, a hundred or a couple hundred of these uh, to be able to make uh, a bunch of them. So you can, because we have, there's a bunch of these battery available. So what I'm doing here, I just connected all of these packs together into it and I'm thinking it has 28 of these right but I'm thinking that maybe I need to scale it down to 24 because there's just not enough room to put 28 so the if you put them here you'd have to put them on like second level right and so I still have to figure out how we're going to um secure this if we ended up putting it on a box, right? I like power walls and I like to design power walls to be inside, uh, uh, you know, electrical boxes, metal boxes, because it's, an, it's an electrical, it's a battery, right? So everything that's electrical needs to go inside of a box, you know? As much as uh, builders, DIY battery builders like to show off their batteries, they really belong inside of a battery uh, a box, right? And so that's what we're doing. So we need to figure out how we're going to uh, secure these. And the good thing is that they have screws here, screw holes or, or threaded inserts. So we might just build like a plate or something that has all these spacing correctly, and then you'll be able to s secure those. But then we need to be able to face it the other way around and then secure that on the back of the box. I don't know. Maybe if you guys have a ideas on how to do this, then we'll tackle that project next. But for right now, yeah, this is what I'm doing. I'm probably gonna eliminate two of these. And then the next test, I have to charge it because if you see, this, these are at 34.9, so 35 volts. So they're, you know, they're, they're low. Uh, they're even below nominal. And see, you see these are all on. The other thing that I have to figure out is an easy way to to turn these on and the way you do it is by uh pressing a little reset button that's in here so the problem is that this hole is not here you have to make it so you see that little hole there i drill that little hole in there and um i need to figure out a super easy way to drill that hole for us to do it so that people don't end up uh, having to take all these little because it's a lot of work to take off all these little boards because they have glue all around it and stuff and so the easier way is to drill a hole but easier you know if people if you don't know what you're doing with the drill but you know, then you'll just ruin the battery and so maybe we'll i'll make like a little jig or something that is super easy for us to do it so that's the next thing that i have to figure out because you have to turn on these batteries well you don't have to turn them on before but at one point you have to turn them on. If you connect them all into this, you can charge them, but then you'll have to turn them on. Each one, to, you know, click that reset button to turn them on, and then you'll be able to use it. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just charge it, and I'm just using a variable power supply. This one goes from zero to, I don't know, 50 or something volts. Um, yeah, zero to uh, 48 volts up to 20 amps, right? So uh, this is part of the uh, the dongle, right? The And so I haven't set this at all. I have I just, just connected it and this is how it works. And you can see that it is working because when you put like, I don't know, let's put five amps into the battery, 5.5. Well, this one says 6.5, so it's off about a one amp. So I don't know which one is correct. I guess we can double check it with our meter. And then I think there's a way to adjust this one. I'll make another, you know, in future video where I'll show you how to go through that and stuff. But here's where we are. 
this is where we're at at this point and i'm testing this i'll this will take a while this is 4.4 or four point almost four and a half kilowatt hours right now here so this at you know even if i put it at you know 10 15 amps i'll put it at 15 out of 20 you know if you if you run this at full peak it's not gonna last you long and there's more chances of stuff breaking you know so at 15 amps it's gonna take quite a bit maybe all you know i don't know 12 hours or 24 hours i don't depending uh you can do the math there you know what 15 amps at 36 volts what that is and then the yeah and then this is 4.5 so once it's fully charged then i'll start loading it so i'll put some loads you know some uh uh one of these uh grid tie inverters right and then we just push a bunch of power back into the grid that's so that we can load this you know the whole thing the board and the cables and the thing and see just how much power we're going to be able to push by the way this one's different it's got different fuses here uh, these ones were able to source out and salvage them from other equipment that we had in here. So we have a bunch of these. So the cool thing about this is that we can use them here without adding much more expense to this mega dongle. This actually is about half the price of the first one that we did for the other batteries, the ES200G cells. So everything is going to be much uh less expensive the batteries themselves are less expensive that thing that we have to make is less expensive is much quicker to make because these connectors are not custom they're not proprietary and so also we the way we order them they're already pigtails like this so my guys can solder them in here much much easier and even uh, once we offer this as a kit you the end user uh it's really easy for you to you know solder those in there right and so we'll pass the the savings on to you if you want to do a little bit more of the work kind of thing right so this is going to be much better uh diy projects much going to be much easier uh we just have a few more things to figure out like how to secure these in a box um and then just to see what rating we're gonna allow to put on this right on this configuration here of course we could always go thicker copper right up to four or five ounce copper obviously then that shoots the price way up when you start doing that but if we need to right um because you want to run a uh, you know a high powered power wall or whatever uh yeah then you could do because see this is these each one of these ones could do about five amps continuous right and then we have 25 of those yes yeah, so you're talking about you know 100 200 amps that this battery system here can push now yeah the obviously i we don't know where these uh bm this pcb uh is gonna start overheating and we don't definitely don't want to run that and so that's that's just what we're gonna do here so we'll wait till those charge up and then we'll run that test and we'll do the thermal camera and stuff and then we'll give it a rating and then yeah we'll make these available and then you guys can buy them so that you can start building batteries this is gonna be one of the easiest power walls to build definitely because these batteries are so easy to use and the only downside that it is is that you'll have to get a 36 volt inverter which uh there are not that many on the market there right and so but we'll basically i'll reach out to some you know chinese manufacturer maybe i can get them to get us a split phase uh, 36 volt inverter because the single you know the the 120 there's a bunch of them and they're you know they're super cheap you can get them but uh, the only thing that's missing is like a big one right uh but if we can get that then yeah we have a, a full system that you can build and power your entire home uh some backup and also some grid type with the use of those right so we'll run through all those setups we'll do the full video uh the full build and stuff but this is tonight is just a little quick update of where we're going with this we're almost there so just uh you know keep a lookout for that video and that project when it comes here in the next few days all right guys thank you for watching we'll see you guys on the next one bye
Who is that? 